Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in this tutorial, we will be taking a look at how actual the DNS communication works. The DNS protocol that is the domain name system and uh, as defined by the RFC in the RFC 1034 and 1035 is what uh, some consider one of the most important protocols in use by the internet. This is because DNS is the you can say as proverbial molasses that holds the bread together. In a nutshell, whatever you type in the web address such as http colon www.google.com into your browser, a DNS request is made to a DNS server in order to find out the IP address that uh, name resolves to. This is because routers and the devices that interconnect the internet do not understand google.com. They only understand IP addresses uh, such as 74.125.95.103 and that's for Google. So if you go ahead and check over here, I'll just go ahead and show you instead of typing that if you go ahead and type 74.125.95.103, let's see what happens. Because this is an IP address of google.com and I don't know, okay, uh, my bad, I'll, if I just go ahead and show it out to you, perfect. It should actually open google.com but let's check what's the problem over here and yeah we counter k j f j f k it should show me that this is the ip address of google.com it's way too slow i believe okay yeah perfect as you can see this is the IP address the host is the same and United States and so whenever you go and type google.com it will search which IP address is registered to google.com and no matter what the name is uh, uh, the name will not be uh, similar for any kind of website it may be uh, like google.com google.org or something like that but no matter what happens uh, the name will not be the same because uh, the name goes ahead and provides the IP address a unique uh, identification when the DNS tries to go ahead and gather any information related to that that is the reason uh, let me just start okay so this is as, uh, so okay so the routers understand only the IP address and not uh, the actual name and later on the name which is registered under the IP address will get converted to the IP address and the router will then be able to identify how ex or uh, what exact the DNS uh, is of an IP address. So DNS server itself works by storing a database of entries which is called as uh, resource records of IP addresses to DNS name mappings communicating those uh, resource records to clients and communicating those re resource records to other DNS servers as well. The architecture of DNS servers throughout enterprises uh, and the internet is something that can be a bit complicated. As a matter of fact there are n number of books dedicated to DNS architecture. I will not cover the architectural aspects or even the different types of DNS traffic. You can review that various DNS traffics related to RFCs later on uh, on their own website. But we will be taking a look at the basic DNS transaction and uh, this is how it looks like. DNS client and the DNS query norm the response. So DNS functions in a query response type format. A client wishing to resolve a DNS name to an IP address sends a query to the DNS server and the server sends the requested information in its response. From the client's perspective, only two packets that are seen are this query and response only. The scenario uh, gets a bit more complicated uh, or complex when you consider DNS recursion. Due to the hierarchical nature of the DNS structure of the internet, DNS servers need the ability to communicate with each other and in order to go ahead and locate the answers for the query submitted to the clients. After all, it might be fair expect our internal DNS servers to know the name to IP address mapping of our int local internet intranet server. But we cannot expect it to know the IP address correlated with Dell or Google because that would be illegal again. This is where the recursion comes into play. A recursion is recursion is when one DNS server query another DNS server on behalf of a client who has made a request. Basically, this turns a DNS server into a client itself 
as you can see in this uh, system this one perfectly okay, and spoofing dns there is more than one way to skin a cat totally and there is definitely more than one method available for performing dns spoofing i will be using a technique called as dns id spoofing now so and before i proceed uh, as you can see this is the local dns server this is the client and this is the external dns and this is the attacker so i will normally go ahead and uh, relocate everything from over here in this way so i will not directly send this to uh, if it asks for yahoo i will not send it to yahoo i will send it to my own website which is fake the user will log in or do whatever he wants to and i will get all the information there and then i will redirect it to yahoo.com the same way it works i am the local dns server which is the attacker a response query is sent response query is sent the query response comes back and i send it back to the client that's how it works so uh, there's more way uh, more than one way as i told you and every dns query can be uh, modified or changed depending upon the tools that you have every dns that is sent out over the network contains a uniquely generated identification number uh, that's purpose is to identify queries and response and tie them all together this means that if our attacking computer can intercept a dns query sent out from a target device all we have to do is create a fake packet that contains the uh, that identification number in order for the packet to be accepted by that target and i will complete this process by doing two steps with a single tool first i will arp cache poison the target device to read out its traffic through our attacking host so that we can intercept the dns request then we will actually send the spoof packet the goal of this scenario is to get the users on the target network to visit our malicious website rather than the website they are attempting to access as you can see over here in this figure the dns spoofing attack using the dns id spoofing method there are very few different tools available over here in total so there are different types of tool available can be used to perform dns spoofing i will be using the itlcap which has both windows and linux version and it has a graphic user interface as well so it will be easier for you to understand and you can download itlcap from its own website i'll show you if you are using a windows version probably not because so this tutorial is for Kali but still if you need some time then you can go ahead and see at SourceForge website and you can go and download the tar.gz if you are using it on Linux or something else or Debian something like that and if it is for Windows you can go and download it from over here and it's not much of a big file and these are the easy files easy to use files so you can download either of these this is this is the latest one and i believe it was updated long time ago yep fine the latest version for linux is over here which is 0.7.6 and for the windows version it has 0.7.4 i believe the 7.6 version has not yet been updated for the windows version and there is one more reason why i use linux rather than windows okay so you can download the itlcap from there and if you do a bit of research on the website you will find that itlcap has a great deal of functionality and that is beyond dns spoofing and it is commonly used in many of the mitm attacks so if you are installing itlcap on a windows machine you will notice it has a great graphic user interface which can say as um, which works great but for this tutorial i will be using a command line interface and before uh, prior to executing itlcap a bit of configuration is required and itlcap at its core is a packet sniffer which utilizes various plugin to do the various types of attacks it can perform so you need to go ahead and configure it in different way every time you use to, you want to use different types of attacks the dns dns spoof plugin is that what we will be doing in the attack in this example so we have to modify the configuration file associated with the that plugin on a windows system this can be located at uh, C program files itlcap ng share letter dot dns and if you're using windows at kali linux you can find it at root slash user that user means usr slash share slash itlcap slash iter period dns and this file is fairly simple and contains the dns records you wish to spoof uh, for our purpose we would be use uh, we would like to use any we would like to can say as any user attempting to go to yahoo.com to be redirected to the host on the local network so we will be able to add the entry highlighted over here in the figure in this figure as you can see this is the ip address and this is the original yahoo.com so every time the user tries to connect to this part it will be redirected to us that's how it will work and these entries basically tell the dns spoof plugin that when it sees a dns query for yahoo.com or let's say www.yahoo.com for an a type resource record it should supply the ip address 172.16.16.100 in response in a realistic scenario the device at 172.16.16.100 would be running from uh, some form of web server 
software that would present the user with the fake website as well. So once the file is configured, we are free to execute uh, the command string that will launch the attack. And the command string uh, will use different types of options. So that would be it for this tutorial and I will be continuing the same part in the next tutorial.